Back on the big one, 700 WLW 1009. Dan Carroll till midnight tonight on the Thursday night edition of the Midweek Crisis. As we roll on till midnight tonight. Thank you so much for being here. I know you could be watching NFL football, but I'm glad you're here because we have important issues to talk about. And one, of course, is the, uh, well, there, there's an election coming up. You may, you may have heard about that. And we are going to spend some time talking about that. And uh, I've got a guest on tonight, a guy that I had on, uh, uh, I want to say about a, maybe a month or so ago, maybe a little bit longer. But uh, we had a great conversation then, and I'm hoping the same thing happens tonight. He is the president of the Conservative Caucus, and it is my pleasure to welcome in once again to 700 WLW, Jim Pfaff. And Jim, how are you doing tonight? Uh, great to be with you, Dan. Thanks for having me. Uh, let me uh, let me just read a, a few headlines for you here from and and uh, so much of the polling, and and people are seeing the polls, and uh, for Fox News keeps throwing up this poll that Kamala Harris is ahead by three or four points. We've got all this stuff going on, and all the rest. But let me just uh, give you a few headlines here. Trump outperforming twenty twenty support among Hispanics uh, who prefer him on immigration. More polls show bad news for Kamala Harris. CNN poll, Trump clobbers Harris in every swing state on the economy. Wall Street Journal analysis, Kamala Harris fails to erase Donald Trump gains among black, Latino, and young voters. Donald Trump takes lead over Kamala Harris in Michigan. So the thing is about these polls, when you you look at the, uh, the, the, the the big giant headline, the 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 face of that is well Kamala Harris has this three or four point lead but then when you get into the details of the polls and you find out all these specific issues Trump has a lead on just about every single issue out there except for abortion and as I look at it she doesn't have anything else to run on besides abortion how well you know what say you I I do agree with that I mean in fact uh, she might as well stick with her abortion stance because her economic stance is literally communist. Uh, she, we were, I was just uh, hearing earlier today that she wants to raise taxes by $5 trillion. Like That would be the largest tax increase, not only in American history, it very well may be in human history in real terms. And so um, it, she, th- there's going to be a constant move by the media, as is always the case anymore, to make things look different for the Democrat candidate than is really going on for the Republican candidate. Now, I'm, I'm not going to go out here and say Donald Trump's running away with it right now. I, I don't have any clear way to make that particular judgment because these polls are so bad. There are pollsters out there who do try to get to uh, some sense of reality based on their models that they put up, and they may be stupid models, but at least they, 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 they think that they're modeling what they predict. But most of these polls are really skewing it. When you look at Nate Silver, he's actually got a very high likelihood that Donald Trump becomes president. So he's seeing something in the polls, and he's, by the way, he's a no right winger at all. So I, I think Donald Trump is actually in a good position, and then we're going to really see what happens after this debate, because that's that's one of those incidents that breaks out of this uh, ice cube of unreality that these pollsters like to throw up in the middle of elections. Yeah, the the CNN interview didn't really do Kamala Harris any favors. It certainly didn't do Tim Walls any favors. And I'm reading an article right now about Tim Walls and how he is all uh, but pretty much uh, disappeared from the media. He was the darling of the media and was making TV appearance after TV appearance when it appeared he was in the running for vice president. But since he's become the nominee, he's done uh, he's done one interview on uh, with it. You could call a national interview. And that was uh, the joint interview with Kamala Harris on CNN. Since then, he's had zero appearances on MSNBC, NBC, ABC or uh, any of the other uh, liberal networks. Well, uh, what, what do you attribute that to? Well, I, I honestly, two things. The first one is this. They did find out, at least they believe, that in 2020, if they could throw Joe Biden in the basement, he could get elected. And they feel like they're exonerated on that point. And, and without getting into all the issues of mail ballots and what really happened in 2020, if we just take all that out for a second, they feel like that they're able 
to duplicate that. That's one answer to this. But the second one is, and it points to what you referred to at the beginning here, that in every one of these major factors, particularly economic issues amongst others, and immigration, of course, but the economic issues are by far like number one in the minds of Americans. And if they do any interviews where they get any tough questions at all, that they have to expose their economic policy, Harrison Waltz, then they are they know that it's just going to embed further into the minds of the American people and that that's going to be a problem. So throw her in the basement, and uh, instead of cognitive problems, we've got economic policy and literally socialist communist problems that we don't want people to know about. So I, I think it's quite similar to the Biden play in 2020. Yeah, uh, and, and and a little known item that I found uh, the other day is that as governor of Minnesota, uh, school performance and student performance and education is absolutely abysmal. A majority of Minnesota students are not proficient in math or science. A little less than half can read at grade level, and uh, the, these numbers, I mean, they, they are absolutely uh, absolutely horrible. Uh, and the 49, 50 percent of Minnesota students reached grade level proficiency standards in reading. Forty five did so in math. Thirty, uh, 40 percent uh, are proficient in science. Uh, when you've got less than half of the of the students who are proficient in math and reading and science, to my way of thinking, uh, I, I know there's probably other places where the numbers are a lot worse than that. But uh, when you've got less than half the students at, uh, at grade level. That uh, those numbers are pretty abysmal. You know, they've seen the polls in Minnesota. I'm not going to predict that Trump's going to win Minnesota, but they've tightened quite a bit during this time. And that's because the people of Minnesota, know, or many of them, know what really, really happened. You do not want to talk about the education system like you just brought up. No one, and th this would be an argument for not having Tim Waltz out there talking. You do not want any regurgitation of the literal terror that the COVID lockdowns brought upon Minnesotans who were threatened during curfews by people in the police department with paint guns shooting at people if they were sitting on outside on their porch. You do not want a rehash of the violence that was taking place in the Minneapolis St. Paul area during 2020, the George Floyd response and, and, and a myriad of other things going on in that state. I have friends in that state and even though there's so many Democrats there that it right now that it becomes difficult for a Republican to win it, there are plenty of people in that state that know how bad it was. You don't want that revealed either. And, and that would argue for, like I say, why they keep Tim Waltz out of the public eye. That, that could be that connected with what Kamala Harris is in her actual policies. When you hear now, by the way, that she did very clearly and aggressively want to shut down free speech uh, when, when it came to COVID, in her first run for president, uh, or her run for president, excuse me, in, in uh, 2020, you recognize that there is, are major weak points that they've got to hide. And by the way, on the free speech thing, just to throw this out there, when you look at what's happening in Brazil right now, mm -hmm. that's where we're going, and they don't want that discussion either. Yeah, and well, and, and we just had Merrick Garland come out yesterday with a, a, a what, uh, this is uh, Russia, Russia, Russia 2.0, I guess. And and, and so they, they're laying the groundwork now for more censorship of the American people. Uh, talking about uh, Russia trying to interfere with our campaign. And really, all, all it is is uh, this regime exercising its power once again and saying that we're going to go full steam ahead uh, with censorship when it comes to what we feel the American people can uh, see, hear, or read. You know, here's something about that DOJ uh, Russia, Russia, Russia thing, this indictment that they threw out against Russia today the television, the, the Russian-sponsored television network, they redacted many, many, many names in that indictment, except for the so-called conservative influencers mm -hmm. whose names, who they said in the indictment they weren't guilty of anything. They, they felt they got duped, 
but those are the ones that were put out there. Don't talk to me about Russia's influence. Molly Hemingway said something fantastic on Brett Baer yesterday, which I shared and got huge, huge uh, coverage on my ex profile because it was such a great statement. You know, she said the DOJ and the FBI are the worst people to come out and say anything about censorship after they were in the background with the help of other government institutions like CISA uh, doing these uh, intelligence ops with social media companies to shut down the Hunter Biden laptop story, uh, everything we heard about in the Twitter files, what we found out in the Missouri v. Biden case related to what Facebook was doing and some of the um, uh, subpoenaed items that came out of that case. Uh, the, we have a greater threat. Molly Hemingway made this case, and I agree with it. We have a greater threat from our government when it comes to election interference than any external government, however bad and truly horrible those things would be. I've got the quote right in front of me. We do not need protection from some of these foreign governments meddling in our elections. But we also need protection from our Department of Justice, FBI, and other intelligence agencies who are doing the same. And then you're you're 100 percent right. I mean, we're exactly on the same page there because I was going to uh, reference that uh, during this conversation. Uh, let me let me play for you a, a new Trump ad that has come out, and I think uh, whoever is uh, Trump has got putting ads together for him uh, is uh, doing an absolute and brilliant job. But uh, Kenzie, this is cut number 20. Listen, listen to this. We did it. We did it, Joe. Everyday prices are too high. It feels so hard to just be able to get ahead. And prices are still too high. We did it. We did it, Joe. For many families, there's mu not much left at the end of the month. Costs are still too high. A loaf of bread costs 50% more today than it did before the pandemic. Ground beef is up almost 50%. We did it. We did it, Joe. There's a serious housing shortage. In many places, it's too difficult to build, and it's driving prices up. We did it. We did it, Joe. That as the price of housing has gone up, the size of down payments have gone up as well. The bills add up. We did it. We did it, Joe. And at the end of the uh, the end of the ad, it says paid for by Trump Vance. And Jim Pfaff, I, I listen to that. That is Kamala all in her own words and uh, i think that's brilliant it's hitting her hardest on the issues on which she's weakest and that is the economy and uh the other issue where she is weakest is uh when it comes to uh to national security and the border so uh, i i think trump is, is right on point there and this debate coming up tuesday uh he to, to my way of thinking he's just got to hammer that home well the economy is the issue that he wins on if he drives at home when you put the 40 plus percent uh, concern of Americans, 40 percent of Americans concerned about economy as their number one issue, and then another 15, 13 to 15 percent on immigration, and you hit those two items, you've got half the country on your side. If you just stay on those two issues, emphasizing the economy most of all. So that ad is, is the perfect way to address the differences between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. Donald Trump is a winner on the economy. He's going to have a tough, by the way, with it, what, when he gets elected, as I predict, he's going to have a tough road there for the first couple of years because this economic situation is so bad. And I really do believe, and many economists are saying, that there is a threat of recession coming. He's going to have to deal with that. But I'm going to tell you what, the American people, if they knew that was the case, which I don't know that they do right now, but as they look at their checkbook every single day, they go online and look at their bank account. They know that they have a serious problem. When James Carville said in the 1990s, it's the economy, stupid, uh, you know, that, that is a truth of, of political uh, of politics. It's just a truth of politics. The, the guys that lose on the economy lose the, tend to lose the election. And by the way, that, although he didn't deserve it at all, that's part of the reason that Donald Trump didn't get even more votes than he could have gotten in 2020, because he certainly didn't deserve it. It was Democrat states mostly shutting down the economy. Still, the economy was bad. People do react to that at the voting booth. And I, I, I've been predicting all year long, and I still think it to be the case, that when November 5th comes around, when all these even early votes are happening leading up to November 5th, and we definitely need to go to same-day voting. 
But when you, you look at all this, none of this economic problem is going away. Through all these early voting states, Pennsylvania starts on September 15th, yeah. all the way to November 5th. Kamala Harris has that headwind, and I think it's a pretty strong one. All right. Well, Jim Pfaff, we got to run. But uh, if people want to find out more about the conservative caucus, where do they do that? They go to the conservative caucus dot org and and if they want to get involved learning how to do grassroots we've got things there for them and and other issues that they can really benefit from if they just go to the conservative caucus dot org all right jim faff always great having you on let's do it again before too long and uh, and thanks for your time tonight Always great to be here with you, Dan. Thanks. All right, there you go. Jim Pfaff, the Conservative Caucus. Uh, 1025, got to get to a break. News coming up, bottom of the hour. But uh, from now, and uh, or until now, until midnight, time for your phone calls. Five